We've got a Chevrolet Silverado here with a 5.3 liter engine. And it's got a bad oil pressure sensor. So I'm gonna show you how to replace that. Here's my 5.3 liter engine and my 2005 Chevrolet Silverado. It's got a bad oil pressure sensor, sometimes called a oil pressure sending unit because it does send a signal to the gauge. And I'm gonna show you what the gauge looks like right here. All right, so here's what my gauge is doing. immediately drops to zero and then oil pressure low. So it's basically just fluctuating, going crazy. It was pegged out on 80 and there it goes now, but it problem first started, it was pegged out on 80 all the time. I need to suggest that you watch this whole video before tackling this project because I could save you some aggravation. And first thing I'm gonna do is take this cover off, take my 5 sixteenths. Take this bolt out and then slide it forward and that's it for the cover. So here's my replacement sensor and it's part number 12677836 and that's an AC Delco part. I've heard of the cheaper parts that are made that have this plastic base that are really thin and they end up breaking sometimes even on installation. So I went with the extra, it's $40 for this from my local parts store. So to replace this, it takes an inch and 16th, preferably six point socket, or it could also use a 27 millimeter socket. As you can see, this inch and 16th six point is a pretty good fit. It's got a good grip on it. So here's my setup. I got my flex head ratchet, my six inch extension, and I've got this little flex. I had to use the adapter because I got a half inch socket. The other option, instead of using this little flex, is to use a uh, swabble which is this right here, or you could also use this universal. I don't like using the universal so much to get in a bind and you could actually not tell, but you can end up breaking. I don't want to take a chance on breaking this plastic, the cheaper ones. I mean, this is the AC Delco, but I've heard they can be so thin that people have actually broke them when they were putting them in. I've got that cover off. Next thing I'm going to do is climb back here and show you where the sensor is. I already got my stool in place. Let's go in and try to find that sensor. All right, so there's the sensor right there. So I'm gonna try to get the connector disconnected from it and not break the tangs on the connector. All right, I blew out around there to get rid of some of that trash. Now I'm gonna put my socket down there first without the extension, then I'll put the extension on there. That makes it easier. So I'm actually gonna take this fuel line loose because my arm's so big when I try to get down through here, it's gonna give me a little bit more room to work with. So first thing you have to do is pop this clip off Slide it forward, it comes right off. And then to get that fuel line off, you have to have, I have this master disconnect set that does air conditioning lines and all kinds of stuff. It's some Mac tools. I'll try to put a link in the description below. But I'm gonna use this particular tool right here. And it basically goes on the line like this. And then you kind of pull the line forward and push on the tool at the same time. And that disengages those clips and you pull the fuel line loose. All right, so I got the fuel line off. I'll let that air out for a little bit. But as I mentioned before, you can do this without taking that fuel line off. It gives you that little bit more room to get back in there. And not everybody has these tools sitting around. So if you wanna do it without taking that off, it's totally understandable and doable. So I got my socket on the sensor and I connected my extension and my ratchet and I've got it loose. I'm about to take it out. Here's the old sensor I got out. All right, so I've gotten the sensor out. Let's go look for that screen. Okay, so there's the hole. Let's see if I can zoom down a little bit so you can see it, so we can see it. All right, so it's supposed to be down in that hole right there. One other thing I need to mention before I forget that I ran into, and it's probably just because it's this year model and it just happened to be where they put that connector. You see that connector right down there that's disconnected, and then right on the other side of it is a 10 millimeter bolt holding that in place. Well, it was angled just 
to where I couldn't get my socket over the oil pressure sensor. I took my 10 millimeter swivel socket and I went down in there, I loosened that. That allowed me to turn that just enough to where I could get my socket on there. And when I get done, I'll plug that back in. I probably didn't need to unplug it. All I needed to do was loosen that connector, but that may save you some time in aggravation. So I never did find a screen. I stuck a bolt down in the oil pressure sensor hole and there was nothing. And I got to reading some of the forums and some of the people were saying that all that screen does is collect sludge and causes you to have oil pressure sensor reading issues. So apparently my engine doesn't have one of those screens. So I'm just suspecting that it's been replaced before I bought this truck used. So I'm thinking that that screen has already either disappeared or somebody's taken it out. If you notice, the new sensor already has sealer on it, so we don't have to worry about putting any sealer on the threads. So I'll put the new pressure sensor in and I torqued it to about 15 foot pounds. Actually, I got it pretty tight. 15 seems a little bit high to me because it's just aluminum. It's got sealer on the threads. I don't think you're gonna have to worry about it leaking. So I just put it in until it's tight. And I used my Mac Tools torque wrench to at least kind of check it. And it ended up being around close to 15 foot pounds. All right, so I got the new sensor in place. The fuel line's connected. This covers back on and you know, any of these jobs are not that hard to do. I was a 25 year NASCAR engine builder. And before that I was a five year dealership technician, but I've been doing this stuff even before I was a dealership technician. It's just, you're always going to learn. You're always going to do stuff and you're also going to save yourself some money. So anything I can do to help comment on this video and I will help you as much as I can with my experience. I started my own business working on anything and everything. Don't be intimidated, you can do it. If you don't know how to do it, get on YouTube and watch other people like me and learn how to do stuff. All right, so now let's go in there and check and see and make sure that it fixed the problem. All right, it's fixed. Hit that subscribe if you like this video and stay tuned for more coming up just like it.